For this week and the following two, I'll be talking about techniques of integration. This is a technical section of the course, focusing on methods and algorithms for calculating integrals. However, before starting into the techniques, I want to make this short video about the inherent difficulties of integration. Integration is much more difficult than differentiation. For elementary functions, the derivative rules are a complete set of tools. Any elementary function has a derivative which is another elementary function, and that derivative can be calculated using the known rules. For integrals, the situation is entirely different. The rules are much less algorithmic, and there is much more guesswork involved. More importantly, sometimes none of the rules work at all. There are elementary functions f of x, such that the integral of f of x has no solution which is still an elementary function. Here is an important example. The antiderivative of e to the x is e to the x plus a constant, since the exponential function is its own derivative. This is a lovely function to integrate. The antiderivative is almost exactly the same, is certainly still an elementary function, is not more complicated. However, consider a very similar function, e to the negative x squared. This is also an important function. Its graph is the well-known bell curve, and it is used throughout statistics and probability. Its integral is important in those applications, and I'll show later in the course when I talk about integrals and probability. But what is its antiderivative? Unfortunately, there is no elementary function that solves this. There is no combination of polynomials, powers, roots, trig, exponentials that can produce an antiderivative. It just can't be done. So this is a very useful integral, but it is impossible integral to write down with the functions we already know. I've been talking about integrals that are solvable by elementary functions. However, the class of solvable integrals is much larger than this if I allow myself to consider non-elementary functions. Any integral might not have an elementary antiderivative, but that doesn't mean it doesn't have any antiderivative. The antiderivative might just have to be a new kind of functions. So which integrals have solutions? What functions are integrable? There is a nice theorem here, and I won't even give the strongest version of it, but I'll give something that is good enough for the purposes of this course. The theorem says this, every continuous function has an antiderivative. And this is actually quite a result. Continuous is not a very strong condition. It's a much weaker condition than, say, differentiability. Sharp corners are not differentiable, but they're continuous, so they're fine for integration. As long as a function is continuous, then the idea of area under the curve makes sense, and that means that the integral makes sense. So these unsolvable integrals actually do have solutions. The solutions are some new functions which are just the antiderivatives of the original functions. The new functions just might not be elementary functions. They are new things, with new names, new properties, and new behaviors. In fact, Integrals without elementary antiderivatives are one of the most significant source of new functions in all of mathematics. There's a whole enormous branch of mathematics that studies all these other functions, names them, calculates their value, determines their properties. And this brings up an important and subtle theme in mathematics. What really is a solution? To take the example above, does the integral of e to the negative x squared have a solution? If, for a solution, you mean an elementary function, then the answer is no. If, for a solution, you mean any function, possibly an entirely new and unknown function, then the answer is yes. Whether a mathematical problem has an answer can very much depend on the subtleties of how the question is asked and the assumptions about what possibilities exist. Adjusting to this observation can be difficult. The world of things in mathematics is thinks of mathematics as a place for problems with clear, unique, well-defined solutions. Well, now I'm saying that solutions might be a matter of perspective? That's a change for sure, but it is true. Whether a solution exists may very well depend on whether you want to consider the solution, whether it's a part of what you consider mathematics at some moment in history. 
This video has some important points to make about what solutions really are and about creating new functions to solve integrals. However, I'll mostly leave these points aside for the next three weeks. The techniques that I'll go through will be concerned with elementary antiderivatives, and functions which do not have elementary antiderivatives will be considered unsolvable for these videos. Just know that when I say unsolvable or has no solution, I explicitly mean among the elementary functions. You could invent all sorts of new functions to solve many of the integrals that I will call unsolvable. 